man for the first time has stepped forth into the emptiness of space. This film is about a great feat of Soviet science, the victory of spaceman Pavel Belyaev and Alexei Leonov. Man leaves ship in space. This film was made possible through the participation and consultation of research institutes and organizations which took part in the actual launching of the spaceship Voskhod 2. Scenario by Rapchikov, Produced by Kosenko, camera by Afanasyev, Rafikov, Suvorov, and Shumov. Sound recorded by Aipov. Produced by the Moscow Popular Science Film Studio. The Soviet spaceship Vostok was the first ever to orbit the Earth with a man on board. The Aurora proclaimed a new social epoch in human history and the Vostok opened up the space era to humanity. The Vostok spaceship is a huge one, weighing over six tons with the last stage of the launching rocket. A sphere over two meters in diameter, equipped with 300 different instruments. Altogether, six Vostok satellite spaceships were launched into orbit about the Earth. When the flight is over, the Vostok returns to Earth, plunging through the dense layers of the atmosphere in which even meteors burn up. Roaring sheets of fire can be seen through special heat-resistant glass. The surface temperature of the ship reaches 10,000 degrees. The astronaut can land inside the ship, or he can be catapulted. This is the world's first passenger spaceship, Yuri Gagarin's. It landed in the steppes near Saratov. Another landing on the Volga. Herman Titov has just landed. Spaceship was stocked too, all burnt and black from the fiery descent from the atmosphere, but safe and sound. Andrian Nikolaev came down in the stone steps of Kazakhstan. The flight is over, but Andrian hates to leave his Vostok free. space, Valentina Nikolaeva Tereshkova. Like the other Vostoks that have circled the Earth, hers too can be used again for new launchings. The Vostok space vehicle has been called a wonder of science and engineering, and justly so. It's the space symbol of the 20th century, but science never stands still. This is a new ship, the multi-seat piloted Voss Hod, a great improvement over earlier vehicles. It's capable of carrying a whole crew. On October the 12th, 1964, it carried an engineer, a scientist, and a doctor, 
on its first trip into space. Vladimir Komarov, Konstantin Vyaktistov and Boris Yegorov. This new ship makes it possible to solve new problems in space research. The problem of a walk in space was no longer science fiction, but had become a routine undertaking on the program. It took Alexei Leonov and Pavel Belyaev five years to prepare for their Voschod 2 flight. The walk into space means to step into a vacuum, but there's no such deep vacuum here on Earth. So, an artificial one was constructed for the two spacemen, a thermal pressure chamber. The cabin of the spaceship was wheeled into this chamber, which resembles an underground town. This was the first training session of its kind. Leonov and Belayev experienced the deep vacuum of outer space and also the extreme cold of the void in this chamber. The only thing lacking is weightlessness. But I have orders to close the hatches of the chamber. From the control panel, commands are given to the spacemen to enter the cabin of their ship, and then comes an order to the machine department. What is a vacuum? How do high altitudes threaten human life? On the Earth, the human body has an internal pressure that perfectly balances the outside atmospheric pressure. As the altitude increases, the outside pressure falls off rapidly, while the internal pressure remains the same. This causes a disruption in gas exchange, which consists in oxygen being taken by the blood and carbon dioxide being released. Breathing stops, and blood circulation comes to a halt. At 20 kilometers altitude, oxygen starvation paralyzes the cells of the brain and the blood begins to boil at ordinary body temperature. Life and a vacuum are two things that cannot go together. Yet we have to learn to live and work in a deep vacuum. Cabin pressure unity, humidity 37, close to 40, temperature 20. Ascent to altitude 37, velocity at maximum. Watch pressure in the cabin. Start minus 5 minutes. Set tape recorder, full volume, VKU outside, feeling fine, ready for takeoff. Altitude 30, 36, 37. Hold the pad. Separation affected, close viewing ports. Put on gloves. Check right glove. Watch left glove. An opening valve of cabin simulated to balance pressure. Pressure in airlock going up. 
exit from the cabin atmosphere to the deep vacuum and code of space will take place through an airlock. The process of locking on rivers with dams is done this way. A ship enters a lock and together with the water delivered to the chamber rises to the next level or is lowered to the next level. The same principle is used in leaving submarines underwater. And now it's being used to get out into space. The cabin air of the spaceship is delivered to the lock and pressure is balanced. The spaceman enters the air lock, which is then depressurized. The spaceman can now simply walk out into the deep vacuum of space. Ready for opening of hatch. Helmet is tight, gloves on, feeling fine, ready for exit. Am opening hatch of cabin simulator. Begin exit. Is the film camera on? Am crossing the edge. Am settled in airlock. Am taking over control. Hatch of cabin simulator is closed. Get ready for opening the hatch of airlock. Am opening hatch of airlock. Hatch of airlock is open. Get ready for exit. Ready for exit. Am out as far as the waist. The void of space is a dead and rough world. In the vast expanses of space, our Earth is but a tiny bit of dust. But man has ventured forth and will conquer the universe. Everything is strange and unusual in this new world. There's no support, no top, no bottom. Everything is weightless. Orientation is lost. The vacuum is dangerous. Man in orbit about the Earth is confronted with a hostile environment, belts of radiation, a solar wind, and solar storms. Outer space is not only a hazardous vacuum, but also a mysterious state of weightlessness. Neither vacuum nor weightlessness are known on Earth, but both are created artificially in an airborne laboratory. Carried by an aircraft is a mock-up of a spaceship cabin. Bilayev and Leonov are in their seats. Weightlessness sets in when the plane flies in a parabolic flight path. Within a few seconds, Leonov has to leave the cabin through an airlock. The extremely complicated experiment has begun. The first, still other barriers to an exit into outer space. Space medicine and space biology have worked out a methodology of training the spaceman for flights in the cabin of a spaceship. Now, for the first time, the spaceman has to leave the ship and step out into open space. The first one to do this was Alexei Leonov. How would he react mentally when he entered this new and mysterious world? Would he lose courage? Wouldn't he be a fearful of falling, afraid of losing orientation, the fear of losing touch with the last link, the ship? Day by day, Leonov goes through tests under the observation of scientists. 
A hidden camera follows his every action through the glass windows of viewing ports. Scientists are worried that his reason and willpower might be paralyzed by the sight of the fantastic ocean of void. That ancient terrestrial instincts would clash in this world where everything is so unearthlike. No weight, no support, no air, no orientation. Psychologists know of cases when a person after a long stay in a closed room comes out into the open and is mentally disabled. It's too much for the mind. Alexei Leonov undergoes a special training program to overcome this so-called psychological barrier and to develop spatial courage. Scientists summarize the observations of Leonov in the cabin simulator. Excellent results were obtained after training on the centrifuge and the space chamber, in the zero gravity pool, and on other special training devices. Now it's time to test the psychological preparedness of Leonov to face the void of space. After a long stay in the silence and isolation chamber, Alexei Leonov is put in a plane and sent skywards. How will he react to this test? He is not alone, though. An experienced instructor goes along. Takeoff and descent proceed normally. Here it is, the blue expanse. What a sharp contrast to the silent isolation chamber, this endless vastness of sky. Will the honor experience hallucinations, vertigo, loss of orientation, maybe illusions? No, everything is fine. The psychological barrier is surmounted. Home at last, back on Earth. The search party found the astronauts north of Perry. The first eager questions, what did you see up there? How was it? What did it feel like soaring in space? And there certainly was a lot for Alexei Leonov to tell about the first 20 minutes spent in space and for Pavel Belyaev to tell about the first manual landing of a spaceship. The first autographs, but many more will come later. Leonov comes from Siberia and enjoys a snow bath. After life in space, they took up life in the Ural Taiga. Breakfast from tubes to remind one of outer space. The snow is deep in the taiga, right up to your shoulders. Trees are being cut down to build a wooden landing strip.
walking in space is not exactly like a run over Cripps snow on skis. From here, they go to Perm, center of the northern part of the Ural Mountains. Inhabitants give the heroes a real warm reception. The Euro people are experts when it comes to precious stones, but Diamond 1 and Diamond 2 are something quite different. Gifts, souvenirs of all kinds. The astronauts say goodbye to Perum and leave for Baikonur. Excitement increased when the spacemen arrived in Baikonur, their launching site. The historic feat performed in space belongs also to the workers, scientists, rocket men, mathematicians, physicists, medical staff, chemists and engineers. This is a detailed story about man's first steps through a door into open space. Alexei Leonov shows some drawings of the Earth's halo. Time has come to leave Stella Town and head for Moscow. Baikonur is left behind, and the heroes again take to the air. What a nice feeling with your hands on the wheel. Destination, Moscow. Everyone is waiting for Pavel Vilayev and Alexei Leonov.
Nine astronauts have already walked down this red carpet. Now come the 10th and 11th. Commander of Spaceship Voskhod 2, Pavel Belayev, reporting. I report to the Central Committee of the Communist Party, the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet of the USSR, and to the Council of Ministers of the USSR, that the flight of Spaceship Voskhod 2 has been successfully completed. The experiment with the exit of man into space from a space vehicle has been fulfilled. The crew are in excellent condition and are ready to fulfill any task set by the party and government. Pilot of Voskhod 2, Colonel Belayev, reporting. The new space flight turned into new festivities for the whole country. Diamond was their call sign. This strongest of all things is suggestive of the strength and courage of the spirit and heart of Soviet people. To commemorate this great deed, a container with the documents and films about man's first exit into the open cosmos will be placed at the foot of this monument to Konstantin Tsiolkovsky in Moscow. And people in the future will be able to see the picture of the unparalleled feat of Soviet science in the conquest of the stellar ocean of the universe.